What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Carefree and so we finally confirmed this as a low and we finally got that bounce that we've been talking about. So <clears throat> that does change things up and uh, we got a lot to talk about today and so let's just you know jump right into the price action right now. So biggest thing here confirm this as a low we closed above the wick high right here all good we even got extension all the way up to the purple 55 like we were talking about now that we have a confirmed low though let's go ahead and throw our fibs on there so we'll, let me make sure i'm doing this right right i think it's like what uh let's see i'm always messing this one up there we go because we're trying to do a retracement uh just so that way I can line up where I think these, uh, you know, where we really got to be on lower or lower high watch at, which is about there. So we kind of already had it set up. Not too much has changed. <clears throat> and also from this, right? So this is, this is the lower high region that we're like looking out for, right? So in fact, this whole area right now, uh, I, I'm not a financial, uh, wait, <laughs> messed it up uh this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor right and so if it were me which this is what i'm doing right i'm gonna go ahead and be cautious in this area just because uh well our last uh our last high is way up here at about four thousand dollars and this does not look like it's going to be a v-shaped recovery uh so that implies a lower high is going to be made now I would be very cognizant, very, very cognizant of any type of weakness in this area. Uh, even right here, right here could even, uh, we could print a lower high right here. But again, I'm really watching out for about uh, anywhere between about $3,000 and uh, $3,400, right? To keep it, keep it nice and simple. And in fact, we could go ahead and get rid of this range right here because it really shouldn't be there, honestly. But that's the range that I'm looking for uh, a lower high to be put in for sure, right? Super cautious. Now, do I think we're going to go ahead and test some more downside? Honestly, mm, that's, that's a pretty good question. Uh, basing off of this, let me, let me look at the weekly first, right? Just to double check. I think, I think that question is going to get its answer within a few more days. I need to see how more price action is going to go ahead and uh, play out. But just for my own curiosity, I will do a FIB extension just to see where the relevant areas, areas are to the upside as we go ahead and go up now that we have this nice brand new wide range. And so... $5,000 is going to be a little bit of an area and about 60, 6,200 bucks up to about 7,500 bucks. Okay. Very interesting. And I'm just going to mark those areas off just for future reference. I'm going to remove this just because, you know, I think it's a long time before we get there, but I do want to mark those areas off for now. Um, price action typically does move a little bit faster than I thought it would or usually does, right? <laughs> but anyways, so we got that bullish cross on the stochastics. They look pretty weak, bouncing off the edge of the oversold area, honestly. Uh, we are coming up to the EMA on the RSI. That typically is a nice region to go ahead and get a pullback, especially after something so aggressive uh, where you just like tap it once and then just never like come in contact with it again the whole time. Typically, the next few taps after that are gonna be a. Uh, <clears throat> Or, you know, you're going to have a little bit of uh, some downside on that. Um, something to note here, too, is volume is not that crazy on this move up. Uh, again, volume is not a must, uh, but it is preferred, especially coming off the lows. This is telling me, like, so far that this is not that strong of a pivot. And we have no divergences, not one, obviously, because we only have one low. And so here's what I think is going to happen, right? We put in a high somewhere pretty much from where we're at right now all the way up to about $3,400. We put in a high somewhere in this area, right? And then we go ahead, come back down and test some more downside and uh, <clears throat> start to get some divergences built up. And then we'll go up and test, you know, 
the prior all-time high. That's kind of what I think is going to happen. Now, does that mean is that that's going to happen immediately? No, this is a daily. So obviously, it's going to take some time uh, for all that to go ahead and play out. So, you know, patience is the name of the game. Anyways, anything else to note here? Hmm. Let's see. Now we're still good. All, all the important moving averages, aka like the 200s right now, uh, have positive slopes. Uh, the 55 is starting to get a positive slope just a little bit. I would say it's more sideways. And so uh, I do think we go ahead and play out this range a little bit more, especially with this being kind of sideways. But again, we're going to need a few more daily candle closures for this to go ahead and actually be confirmed. HVP still redlining and then moving average is still expanding. And so again, where you can still have some very wild price action. Uh, if we go ahead and take out this low, seeing as we already took out this one, um, if we the next relevant area is pretty much that 200 moving average. Uh, this one is the exponential too, just so you guys know. And this one is the 200 uh, simple moving average. And yeah. Yeah, so we take out this low, I would be looking for a move all the way back down to the 200 simple, not even the 200 exponential, to be honest. I think that would be the 200 simple. Coming in at around like $1,600 to $1,500. And as we discussed like a few days ago on the weekly, that is also a very relevant area. Also on the three day, it's a very relevant area. And so we've got a lot of time frames coming up there. And typically those are when, uh, those are when things get hit. Uh, yeah, I definitely don't think we're done. And in order to build up those divergences on a daily, that means you're going to have to be making lower lows. And lower lows on price action compared to higher lows on RSI in order to get those. So yeah, it still kind of implies a little bit more downside. And again, that's why I'm saying be cautious in this region. Uh, I don't think this is the time to, you know, to, to bet the house on on this. You know what I mean? It never is, though. <laughs> but anyways, let's take a look at the 12 hour. Uh, we finally caught the uh, the 10 EMA on the 12 hour, about time, but I would really like to see an open and closure. So depending on how this one closes, it's gonna be very indicative to how I feel. Uh, we do have some bullish divergence on the stochastics, right? And with the bullish cross up. And so I do like that read. <clears throat> but again, as long as we're below, uh, closing candles below, about 2780, it's just lower highs, just lower highs. And so we really need to take this area out in order to get that extension back up to, you know, at least, uh, was that $3,400? And we still have a lot to go from there. And even then, uh, on a 12 hour, the first relevant region isn't even that $3,400. I'm gonna have to rephrase that. It's gonna be about $3,000 because that's where the purple 55 is going to be coming in line with things right at the edge of our nice uh, purple and gold box over there. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and get a drink of water. My voice is getting pretty raspy. Uh, good news is uh, DMI ADX finally starting to really weaken up DMI minus about to you know head up for a dip under the threshold and ADX is looking like it wants to go ahead and follow suit meaning that this is losing strength and losing some momentum to the downside and that's really good um, again the slow doesn't make me very confident that this is like the low but it does look like we're going to be playing out some sideways especially looking at the 12 hour right now um, 200, uh, 200 simple and 200 exponential, both kind of starting to lose their slopes and starting to move a little bit more sideways along with the purple 55. Um, this is more, this is uh, some of the more advanced ways to use your moving averages in case you guys don't know, because they do tell you a lot. <clears throat> it kind of tells you, uh, it's like the DMI ADX and tells you how strong the actual trend is. But anyways, it does look like we go ahead and fill this region out some more and again build up some divergences we still do not have any divergences built up let's go take a look at the six hour same thing that i've been saying uh, <clears throat> this candle is kind of a toppy looking candle but again in order to confirm that we need to go ahead and take out the wick low which we still haven't even done and so it's not too bad we could probably uh we're probably going to go ahead and move a little bit sideways right here from what i'm getting 
and maybe make another try back up to that three thousand dollar region. Stokes are pointed up very, very strong on the uh, on the six hour, so I do like that. And we're starting to come in at the edge of the bullish control zone, and it doesn't look like they want to go ahead and back off just yet. But again. Uh, the last six hour just closed. So I'm talking about this as if this is closing here soon. No, we still have like five five hours and 45 minutes. So uh, a lot can change in that time frame. And we could definitely, we definitely have a lot of time to take out that wick low if that is uh, what Ethereum wants to go ahead and do. But uh, <clears throat> with the, the, geez, man, I can't speak. Anyways, with HVP, Red lining like you see here, the moving average finally, you know, getting up there to like, what, is that 100? Yeah, about, yeah, it's like at a 94. And so I would expect us to kind of, you know, start to move a little bit slower and let, you know, all our moving average start to cool off and really just fill out this region over here. I'm definitely calling for some sideways action. That's in case you guys haven't guessed it. Anyways, looking at the four hours, starting to get to our lower turn time frames. Finally tested the purple 55 on here. Um, took out this low already. Looking like we're getting a backfill on the previous four hour candle. Uh, both of these candles are not pretty, just just so you know. But like I said, uh, I had probably a few videos ago, right? Uh, when I talk about these candlestick formations, oh yeah, and I made a candlestick formation video. Totally forgot. Yeah, I'm starting to do a technical analysis one-on-one -on -one, uh, little playlist for you guys that uh, would like to learn more. So go ahead and check that out if you made it this far. I probably should have said that at the beginning, but you know what, business first. Anyways, what I say about candle formations is that typically in crypto land, at least on the lower term time frames, so this would uh, constitute a lower term time frame. We're on a four hour and they don't really respect these candle formations too much. Like, especially when you come down and you're within your moving averages from what I've noticed, uh, typically likes to print these like fake out formations that kind of get you uh, uh, get you confused a little bit and doubting yourself. In reality, you're probably just going to move sideways, fill it out, and let these moving averages, you know, kind of uh, kind of get closer to each other, and then try another move to the upside. Uh, do I think that's what's probably going to happen? Yeah, I do think we go ahead and make that move to three thousand dollars, and then probably back down. Honestly, three thousand to again about thirty four hundred dollars, then make move back down. <clears throat> Stokes are looking a little weak in this area, but mind you, uh, they are in the uh, over overbought area, and so we could see them trend in this area again some more. And we'll go ahead and show you what those trending Stokes look like once we get down a little bit further in those time frames. But anything else to uh, anything else to talk about? DMI ADX finally, finally losing its grip, both both below the threshold, thankfully. It's been, you know, like a solid two weeks of just straight selling. This this was one long signal. Uh, it was crazy. But anyways, so that's really good. Uh, it's right now pretty much saying no trend. We're consolidating. And uh, there's nothing to really complain about there. Uh, again, this isn't even an uptrend just yet. Uh, not even on a four hour. We have made a low. Uh, still have not made a higher low. So keep that in mind. That implies, you know, in order to make that trend, we're going to have to test a little bit more downside. <clears throat> okay. And we'll just jump to the one hour. Who cares, right? So on the one hour, we got Stokes taking a little nosedive. Um, they are getting to the neutral zone. That is typically an area where uh, the Stokes like to flip-flop back around, as you see right here and right here. And right here, you know, just this general gray area is where the Stokes like to get a little flippy. <clears throat> and so I would, uh, if this is going to continue to the upside, it would look looking like it wants to. And I would assume it does. Or at, at the moment, it looks like it does. Man, I cannot speak today. Um, yeah, I would expect these Stokes to go ahead and flip around here soon. Uh, RSI is looking very good, healthily uh, consolidating in the... Uh, bullish control zone and so I do like that read <clears throat> this is our first time getting back in the bullish control zone since I mean like really like consolidating in it since like mm, the last real consolidation was like the not like 9 May area so it's been a minute been a minute <clears throat> Stokes are starting to get to some pretty egregious levels we have one drive of bearish divergence which did send us back down to our first uh our first area of what support, right? 
And we are getting to move back off that again. I would like to see a, quite a few more drives of bearish divergence be put along in this uh, this general region before I go ahead and call the call the top at least on the short term time frame. And let's see what else. And so that does imply more upside. <clears throat> and you see how these uh you see how we kind of consolidated right here as these moving averages went ahead and uh, caught back up with price action. That's kind of what I'm expecting to see on. Uh, on the four hour, honestly, because these are quite far away. Okay, anything else to uh, talk about? Mm, no, I think that kind of that kind of covers it. Again, relevant areas to the downside. Uh, if we go ahead and take, <clears throat> if we go ahead and decide to flirt with a little bit more downside, I do think the 200 simple is going to be the next relevant area. If we go ahead and actually continue going up, which I do think, but again, we're on lower high watch right now. I would expect, a, I, would, I would be cautious for a lower high within, you know, this area all the way up until about $3,400. And so that's quite a big range. And so I'd just be very cognizant of that. Once we start closing like uh, candles above $3,400, I'll be a little, or above $3,400, I'll be a little bit less wary of that lower high, but it's definitely still a threat. I'd be more so looking for extension back to the prior all-time high, and then probably another move back down. Mind you, don't have any divergences. Stokes are freshly crossed up, though. Uh, the fact that we don't have any divergences does kind of imply that uh, we are going to go ahead and test a little bit more downside here in the future. Again, it's not super required, but I would like to see it. All right, that kind of wraps up uh, Ethereum for right now. And then we'll take a look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is hitting that relevant area of about $40,000. $40, Already tapped that. Confirm this as a low. Uh, just like Ethereum, I do think we go ahead and just take a look at the Stokes, like we've been talking about for days, come back up, and test around the, uh, the upper limits of this trend line. That has been uh, getting the range for price action ever since, whatchamacallit, the start of this year, like January 2021. Anyways, we go if we go ahead and take out about like forty two thousand dollars, right? Mm, I would be looking for an extension, probably back up to about forty three, no forty, forty five thousand dollars. Why? Yeah, forty five thousand dollars. Yep, that's what I'd be looking out for. Again, uh, just like, just like Ethereum, anything in this boxy region right here, looking for looking for lower highs. This whole area looking for lower highs, being cautious. Um, again, we've had this box in here ever since before these lows, and um, it has been, uh, again, price action pretty well. Now, how many more times does this hold up? If Bitcoin really wants to, which uh, Bitcoin typically does, it likes to go ahead and um, go down a little bit further than most people uh, assume it would go down. And so if we're just looking at this bearish retracement, retracement that we have on here, the next relevant area is about uh, $26,000. Um, and so if we get some stats down there, I mean, personally, I wouldn't mind it, right? That's a, that's a big opportunity to, uh, for me. <clears throat> um, I just think it's, a, it's, it's highly likely. It's in the cards for sure, right? Anyways, let's see what else is there to talk about on here. Oh, uh, if we go ahead and take out about $52,000, the next area I'd be looking for is about $60,000, but that's pretty far away because our last high is at $60,000. And so that leaves a whole lot of room for us to go ahead and turn down in between, you know, $38,000 and $60,000. So, yeah, it's not looking like we're going to just come straight up. <clears throat> In fact, I do think we go ahead and uh, move sideways in this area. We also have the uh, 200 simple and exponential starting to kind of lose their slopes right here. Um, and so that's not very good. I do think we go ahead and play out about three to four months of a consolidation phase within, uh, within Bitcoin, uh, no doubt. And that's not bad either. You know, we just had six months of going up. And so, like, can't, can't be too greedy. I mean, like, that was... Uh, if we're taking a look at this, man, that was just crazy. Like, how, how big of a move that was. Like, a 500% move to the upside. Like, man, you can't be greedy about that. If it wants to chill out for, you know, three to, uh, two to three months, let Bitcoin do its thing. You know, those those consolidations is where you, um, 
And it's typically how you get these, you know, four or five hundred percent moves. Like this consolidation was okay. Well, I guess I should actually take it a little bit further. In about 70 days. Well, I'm, I'm still drawing this all messed up, man. Let me do this the correct way, right? Because. Yeah, about 80 something days until we took out the prior high. And so, yeah, about three months, but who can complain, right? Anyways, anything else to know here? Relevant area, $26,000. Area to the upside, 40, 45, and then 52. Lower high watch, of course. Yeah, I think that's it, really, on that one. We'll go ahead and take a look at the four hour real quick, see what we get here. Uh, we finally went ahead and took out this high. Uh, I would look, um, <clears throat> we have not put in a high or low just yet, so still not quite an uptrend. We need two higher highs and uh, two higher lows, and so still need the higher low. But now that we took out this area, I would be looking for an extension probably back up to about $41,000, $42,000-ish. Yep. Stokes getting in the oversold area, not too bad. HVP is starting to cool off, as you can see, we're getting that signal on the four hour, like I was talking about on Ethereum that I'm looking for on the daily. And what else? <clears throat> yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, I don't think uh, I don't think it's gonna be too crazy today. Uh, let me see. What did I want to look at? I think uh, I think we need to go ahead and look at two coins. Two coins, right? Oh, I did not plan those out beforehand. I think, well, we'll go ahead and take a look at, oh yeah, it's Polkadot, Ethereum Classic. Uh, what else? Can't remember. Anyways, Polkadot, still looking just as nasty as I said before, right? Um, relevant area to the upside, about $28. We'll call it 29 since it's right on the edge. About $29. Relevant areas to the downside, about 18.5, if that doesn't hold, again, about 15.5. Does this look like it wants to go ahead and continue up? It definitely does. I mean, we haven't even touched the 10 EMA in a minute. And so I would be looking for that up move to come here probably, you know, today, tomorrow, within the next few days. Uh, could it definitely put in a lower high right here? Yeah, but let's take a look at the lower term time frames and see what they got to say. Looking like it wants to go ahead and give another try to the upside. So, yeah, I definitely think about $29 is definitely uh, in the cards for uh, the short term. Uh, let's see what else. Let's talk. About, let's look at some Ethereum Classic, right? That was one of the biggest gainers today. And, yeah, looking really good. We're getting that hidden bullish divergence off the low. We're going to go ahead. We got that uh, bullish cross. <clears throat> and Stokes are turning up really strong right here. Uh, again, we, we've already kind of tested that $86 region, so that was our first target. Uh, if we go ahead and uh, start closing above this region, I would look for an extension back up to about $107. This is looking uh, looking pretty good. I mean, honestly, like, we had a falling channel right here. The real, like, lower, uh, the last low that we had was, you know, pretty far away at about, you know, $30. So this is still looking just fine. Especially, it's going to look really good. I'm going to get a little bit more uh, bullish on this if we go ahead and close above, you know, the 10 and the 21. So if we close in any posturing like it is right now, um, I'll be looking for for uh, those higher targets up here. <clears throat> yeah, that's looking really good. Uh, let's see, Polkadot, Ethereum Classic. What else is there to look at? We'll take a look at some Dogecoin just because we haven't done that in a minute. Dogecoin's still looking rough. Um... We got that bullish cross. We have a few drives that hit in bullish divergence. Um, I mean, we got, again, I would still be cognizant of like any, any sort of lower high put in in between, you know, about 55 cents and where we're at right now. This does look like it wants to give a little bit more uh, push to the upside. We'll see, but, you know, the 10 and the 21 have, uh, have been dragging this bad boy down for a minute. Uh, Let's take a look at the at the lower term time frames on this bad boy too. I don't really have too much of a good read on this, but if we do go ahead and take out this low again, I'd be looking for a move all the way back down to seven cents. 
But it does look like some upside for right now. So I'll just be looking at that. Let's see. I tried a 55 cents. does look like it, you know, is in the cards. Oh, uh, what else is there? Hmm. Nah, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up right there. Is there anything else I really wanted to check out? Nah, we'll call it a wrap. All right, guys, uh, go ahead. If you made it this far, thanks a lot. Uh, hopefully, guys are going to check out my uh, technical analysis 101 videos. Uh, I made it for y'all. And if you got any questions, let me know. But other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you.